here in Orlando for the Pro Bowl. I'm Daniel Mogg, your host. We've got Russell Wilson, special, special guest, 11-time Pro Bowler, Drew Brees in the house. Drew, welcome. So a few weeks ago, one of our favorites at West East, Drew Brees, retired. Um, Drew, congratulations on a fantastic and just Hall of Fame career. And I forgot about the interview we did, Russ and I did with him in 2017 at the Pro Bowl. And it was uh, pretty, like, just incredible going back and, and watching it and looking at it. And even then, his whole mantra was, I hope, you know, whenever that time is um, for me to be done, that I leave the game better than I found it. And so I think Drew absolutely did that. And uh, I just want to share with you the interview Russ and I did with Drew in 2018. It's an honor to have you, Drew. We've had Tony Dungy on here. We've had some other guys. Nice. But to have you on here, is, is, this, is, this is a true delight for me. Thank you. So, so, Drew, you just celebrated your 39th birthday. Yeah. And you're playing quarterback at a super high level. How, how can I make sure my guy here is, you know, at that level? What's, what's your secret? <laughs> well, he, he takes more hits than me, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, um, I, I think there's there's some things that you feel like are within your control, you know, to make sure that you, you keep your body in tip-top shape and um, you know, do all that you can to, to put yourself in a position to play at a high level. Some things are just, man, God willing, you know, you, you're in vulnerable positions a lot out there. And so you hope uh, you've got those guys in front of you that are, <laughs> that are blocking for you and, and yeah. keeping you clean. But, uh, you know... Um, I think you just develop a, uh, a routine uh, throughout the course of your career, as you probably, you know, you've seen now, Russell, and obviously you played at a high level for, you know, a long time, but it's it's amazing. Like, I remember your first year, and, and all yep. of a sudden, here we are into what? This is year this six? Is, I just had year six. Yep. So year six. Yeah. That's amazing, right? Yeah. I mean... Well, it's amazing because, you know, <laughs> we're breaking down our first practice yesterday, and Coach, uh, Coach Payton is actually talking about, hey, you know, the, naming the captains and the guys who have played the longest. Drew Brees, 17 years. <laughs> I'm like, all right, here we go, you know? But, um, you know, I, I think also, too, what's amazing to me is your mentality. Like, it jumps off the screen. You know, when I watch you how your eyes are, you know, how your mind is, uh, your body language. I'm, I'm a big body language person, so yeah. watching your body language. And, and, and talk about that uh, in terms of your mentality and kind of having that limitless mind and how you use that as an advantage and how you – it's not just on the game day. Yeah. It's an everyday thing, and, and even when we're at Pro Bowl practice, I noticed that. I noticed that. I told you that yesterday. I noticed that my rookie year I came here. I got uh, Eli Manning as a quarterback. I got Drew Brees. I, had, uh, I think Ben Roethlisberger was, uh, Peyton Manning. And you know, I'm watching some of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, and I'm just studying, observing, I'm watching you. And just your body language and how you're moving even practice. And so, you know, I stole a couple things from you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just to watch that. And So talk about that for, yeah. for some guys. Well, as you know, you know, the preparation throughout the week is mm -hmm. so critical. Yeah. And, um, you know, I find that uh, I'm really big into visualization. So as the week goes along, constantly visualizing what I feel like is going to happen throughout the course of the game yeah. and taking our game plan and taking what I'm seeing on film and just kind of meshing that all together so that by the time the game comes around, I feel like I've already played it in my mind about a thousand times, yep. right? So everything that's happening, I've already visualized it happening, you know? Yep. And so you say that, you know, things don't happen in practice and things don't, or excuse me, things don't happen in the game that haven't already ha happened in practice or happened in your head. In your you know, you got to believe it and so see, it, see it happening. And so um, when I get to the game, man, it's just like ultimate confidence. Now I'm a stress case during the week. You know, it's like, oh, what if they do this? What if they do that? I mean, you're trying to think of every you eventuality, right? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But when I get to game day, it's like, man, i got a plan for everything. Man, I, I, got, I got tools in the toolbox to, to combat anything that they can throw at me. So yep. I go out there with supreme confidence. And then that's, that's probably what exudes in the body language. Yep. You step in the huddle, man, this is going to work. Ready to roll. Here we go. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, I've got another question for both of you. Uh -huh. You guys are both guys who've had haters, doubters say, you're too short, you overcome injuries. What advice do you have for kids out there who are facing same type of adversity? How do, you know, what advice do you have for them to overcome odds? Well, I think for me, um, you know, I think it's in your blood. I think when you wake up, you have to think about it. You have to dream about it. You have to visualize it as he's talking about even the game and everything else. But you have to visualize your life. You know, for me, I wrote things down. You know, I, I remember putting sticky notes on my, on my wall every time somebody says, oh, you're not going to be able to play in the ACC. You're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to play Major League Baseball. All these little things that, that was always constantly in my mind. And I would put sticky notes on my wall. And it would just be reminders. It wasn't a thing that... Uh, you know, yes, I guess it's a chip on your shoulder, but more more than anything, it was something. It was a goal for me to overcome. It was the challenges, and and I think ultimately too, you have to you have to surrender and surround. I believe that you have to surrender to what you believe in, and and whether if it's your faith, whether if it's the people, uh, the things that you want to do, you have to surrender to those causes. But I also think you have to surround yourself 
but the people that are gonna help you get there. And my, my mom, my dad, but my friends, the people that I associated with, they, they had the same mentality. And I think that was the encouraging part for me that always kept me going, always kept me hungry working for that. Yeah, I, c I couldn't agree more with everything you said. Yeah. And just to add to that is, First of all, shout out to the six foot and under club. You know, they're, they're, we're, we're, we're few and far between, you know? You did it for me, um, man. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I came in the league and it was Doug Flutie. Doug Flutie yeah. was, was the starting quarterback in, with the Chargers when I came in to back him up. So, you and know. Doug's shorter than you, right? Oh, he's like 5'9. <laughs> okay. I mean, he's maybe the shortest to ever play yeah. in the NFL at that position. But there were things that he could do. And I remember sitting back and watching him saying, I've never seen a quarterback do these things. And so, to that point, like you and I, we don't know what it's like to be 6'4 no, or 6'5. No. So when people talk about that, it's like, I, I don't even know what that's like. But this is what I do know is that if, if, if you take away a, a, a sense from, from you, like close your eyes, and all of a sudden you have this heightened awareness of smell, of sound, mm -hmm. of different things. And so, hey, we are six foot, so maybe we don't see things the way that a 6'4, six, 6'5 six, guy does but it forces our other senses to be heightened. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's good. really good. And so, and that's how we, that's how we survive. That's how we play at a high level. And so I think it, it allows us to do other things much better than everybody else because that's the only way we know how. Yeah. So I, I look at that as, man, I love, <laughs> I love, I love being six foot. You Sometimes know? Uh, yeah. no, we got to get these guys to practice. No, we got to get practice. Yeah, we got to get you guys to practice. <laughs> yeah, we, we, like to have, we like to have fun a little here on Danger Talk. Yeah, so yeah. I want to get you guys warmed up for practice okay, and do, do a little two-minute drill. Okay. okay. So I'm going to ask a question. First thing that comes to mind, you can say one or the other. You can say both. But we're going to run okay. you He's minutes. doing it. I'm doing it. Both. I'm going to ask you. I'm okay. going to ask. Drew, Drew's the guest, so we'll okay. let him go first. Okay. All right. We'll and switch then, off. Yep. We'll okay. switch off. All right. So two-minute drill. Go route or slant? Oh, the go. Possessing wide receiver or speed wide receiver? Is this me or, or Russell? We'll go Russell. Uh, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going speed. Speed. So yeah, I, I'd probably say possession. Possession. All right. <laughs> All right. Who's the harder crowd to play in front of? Who that nation or twelfth man? Oh man. Well. I See, I, I, I feel like I've had a lot of experience going up man, playing from that twelfth man. You had I'll tell you, quake and all. Yeah. There was. <laughs> When we played you guys on Monday Night Football yeah. in 13, I, I had never experienced anything like that. that was just wild. as far as yeah. just that constant just barrage of like, man, like what did we walk into here? You know, it was nuts. Yeah, I remember when we played uh, my first time. It was the only time I played it in, in New Orleans. That was that was pretty loud, man. Was, and the game was online. It was only 15 yeah. seconds yeah, left. It was, it, was it was wild. Toughest defensive coordinator. Ooh. That's, well, that are you is allowed to say that? <laughs> ah, gee whiz. I, don't, I don't give any clues away. Oh, Next no question. Clues, no yeah, clues. right, right, <laughs> right. Exactly. Boilermaker or Badger? Oh, Boilermaker, come on. Hey, come on now. <laughs> Listen, I know you threw the ball 80 sometimes in college, okay, in one game, but uh, the Badger. Against, the, against Badgers. the Badgers, I, I actually. It 1998, hurt. It hurt. Camp Randall, there we go. <laughs> golf or tennis? Oh. I don't know how to play golf. I, I, good enough, but I want to play golf good enough. I, I think I got a chance. Okay. Um, tennis, yeah. See, I started off as a tennis player early in my career. So I'm going to say tennis, even though I love golf, but two sports you can play forever. forever. There's nothing better than golf, though. It's just oh, yeah. relaxing. It's relaxing. It's Therapeutic. Great. Right. I'm with you. Okay. Fastball or curveball? Fastball. Yeah. Fastball. If, I get, if I get the curveball, I may not be here. <laughs> 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 right. Surfing or boogie boarding? He's got that question. Stand up paddle. Stand up paddle. I, I like I, it. Don't I, ask Russell. Not A B. I just added a C to that yeah. multiple listen, choice. Listen, right there. So Sierra and I go to the Bahamas the other day, and I'm trying to paddleboard in the ocean. She's she can do anything. She's paddleboarding like she's right. staying afloat. I'm falling. I, I I fell down 15 times. Really? <laughs> so I, I it'll need to learn. It, it'll humble the greatest of athletes. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's move into fatherhood a little bit. All right. Would you rather get spit on all over, spit up, or just change a blowout poopy diaper? Oh man, that's a good either one. Here's the thing about kids: you you, you, you have such unconditional love yeah. that they can literally do anything to you, and it's just like I love being a dad, that's and true. this is all part of the that's process. I, I, love being a dad. <laughs> I, I I agree with that, uh, <laughs> but a stinky diaper, man. There's nothing like, there's nothing like a little more challenge, a little, little more, you know, you gotta especially more especially there. if it's a little like you know running and all that, you know, that's just, that's a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> all right, dad moves or dad bod. Dad, what do you mean? Like dance moves, Dad. What would you What would you Would you prefer? When, you know, when you get that. Oh no, Dad moves for sure. Dad yeah, moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want that pear shape going. <laughs> no. All right. Later in life. Last question: Date night in or date night out? 
Ian. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say Ian too. I, w- me and C are, are, are home bodies, and we, we're, we're Netflix and chilling. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I got one more question. I've said you both you both are, are dads. Russell, you know, yeah. been dad for a few years, or you've been dad a little bit longer. What's one piece of fatherhood advice you could give to our listeners out there before you take off? You answer that question. You got way more kids than me. <laughs> this is what I always try to tell myself: is that um, you you can say whatever you want to your kids, but at the end of the day they are going to emulate the, what you do. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Right? So your action, actions speak so loudly I can't hear what you're saying. Right? So I, I always try to be as calm as possible no matter what the situation because being a father is the ra- it's, it's the wa- oh, such a wide range of emotions. Right? It's the full spectrum. Yeah. Right? You can be as, as, as happy as you ever thought you could be. You could be as angry as you ever thought you could be. Right? Because you just told them not to touch that and they just you know, <laughs> broke right, it. Right? right? But uh, I think it's just the way that you... The way that you act, the way that you conduct yourself, you you know that they are always watching. So no matter what you tell them, if you're doing something opposite, then that's what they're really going to see. Yeah, that's good. That's so great. model for them oh, at all times. Last quick question, last little thing. You're all, all said and done. You're gonna you're gonna wear the gold jacket, obviously. But all said and done, um, how do you want how do you want to be remembered? Man, <laughs> I, I I've always felt when I first came in this league, I said I want to leave this game better than when I found it. Yeah, that's good. And I want to, I want to make as big an impact off the field mm-hmm. as I do on the field. Yeah, and that 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 goal still holds true. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, you're doing that, my friend. Well, it's a Thank it's you. a pleasure to have you on Danger Talk. It's an honor, uh, Drew Brees, everyone. Um, but it's exciting. You know, you're my favorite player to watch. You know, you're my favorite player to be around. Uh, it's a true pleasure. You make the game better. You make people better. Uh, you make everybody you encounter better. Your kids and everything else. So it's an honor and. Uh, Danger Talk. This is a good one. Yeah. Daniel Thank, you, Thank you, brother. True. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, by. guys. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate you, brother. You okay. too. Now we got to go win. That's right. <laughs> All right. All right. Peace. Go in. A-